Hello. Today I was talking to two different sets of entrepreneurs and interestingly we had um, similar conversations about um, two types of entity structures that um, they were considering whether they should form. So first I was talking to a group of entrepreneurs who are scientists and it's very, very important to them that um, the, pro the, the scientific advancements that they're creating, that they're putting out there into the world, don't get, um, it, that they don't get subjected to a greedy interests that result in the mission or the, the positive impact that the scientific innovation can have. Um, and so they're trying to figure out how could I structure my business in such a way where I make sure that it really, really benefits the stakeholders, the users, um, and doesn't get co-opted or, or doesn't sell out um, in the interest of making investors a lot of money. Um, and then I was talking to these other entrepreneurs that were thinking about maybe starting a nonprofit. And one thing that is interesting that's similar between co-ops and nonprofits is that um, they are both entity structures where the founder really does have to be willing to give up control. Um, so when you start a business and you put in a lot of time and energy and intellectual property and, you know, blood, sweat and tears, um, oftentimes you really don't want to give up control <laughs> because all the, all the effort that you put in, you don't want to get kicked out of your own company. And um, a co-op is an entity that is really for it to be a true co-op, it has to be democratically run, which means that you're going to have members and you can have more than one class of members with different types of voting rights. But um, within each class of members that every member has the same voting rights. So it's like one member, one vote. So if you're the founder and then you bring in some other people um, to be members in your co-op and you're also a member, you're automatically giving up control and you can get kicked out of your own company. With a nonprofit, um, if you have a nonprofit public charity, which is exempt from tax under Section 501c3, you have to have a board that has a majority of members who are independent. So the founder of the nonprofit is going to be like a minority on the board. You can't have, you know, family members. You could have friends, <laughs> but um, you can't have family members or people who um, ha are you're in a financial relationship with on the board. So there are cases where people lose control of nonprofits that they've founded um, because of that requirement. And, the you know, the board can decide, oh, we want to go in a different direction and kick out the founder. So it's a tough situation because, um, you know, there's a lot of good things about co-ops and nonprofits. Um, but, you know, if you are a founder, maybe you're a solo founder, maybe there's two founders, and you really want to bring something positive into the world, but you also don't want to get kicked out of your own company, these, um, these uh, structures may not be the right fit, at least maybe not in the beginning. Um, there are ways to set up co-ops so that maybe they evolve over time. So, you know, in the beginning, maybe the founder has more control, but over time that starts to get more um, dispersed among more members. And, you know, you really want to make sure you're creating a culture where the members really care about the mission and aren't going to just go in a totally different direction. There's there's lots of examples, not a lot, but I know of a few examples of co-ops where um, the members, you know, started out being really passionate and committed to being a democratic organization and having a mission that they wanted to fulfill. But over time, the value of the company might have increased and they decided they would rather just cash out their interest and sell to a big corporation that did not share the initial values because they just really were tempted by that big payout that was available to them. So you have to really think about how you wanna build in the mission over the long term. It's challenging to do that because um, 
there are legal documents that you can put into place that um, require certain things like certain um, uh, approvals that have to be given by certain people in order for certain decisions to be made but those documents can be changed you know so um, I think that the really important thing to think about is what are what are the short-term goals you know if you're a new founder and you know that you really don't want to be kicked out of your company for the next five years or so you can set your company up in such a way where it's maybe not a co-op but you know a corporation or an LLC where you can maintain control but as you grow you make sure that any investors you bring in are not that the you know how the investors come in allows you to stay in control of the company if you raise money from venture capital style investors they're gonna want some control and you could lose control of your company but there are ways to raise money from investors that allow you to stay in control but you also have to keep in mind the long term you don't necessarily want to be in your company forever and you can't be in your company forever so how do you build in the transition so you know maybe um, eventually selling your company to a cooperative I had a client called real pickles that did that the founder sold the company to a co-op and they stayed involved but they brought in other workers in the company to be co-members to be members of the co-op there's also other tools you can use to try to keep the mission in place um, one is called a purpose trust where you give the purpose you create a purpose trust and give it ownership and control over certain assets in the company maybe special um, equity interest that has special voting rights so that that trust which has in its documents um, limitations on what it can do based on the purpose of the trust um, that is a way to make sure that you can you know keep that mission in place even after the founder has moved on there's also relationships you can have where you set up maybe a separate entity that owns the intellectual property and that entity licenses the intellectual property to the operating company but only if the operating company stays true to certain principles so the frustrating part is um, there's really no perfect solution to keeping a company um, mission driven over the long term. There's no like magic document you can create that's going to make certain of that. There's certain things that have more teeth than others, like a purpose trust is going to have more teeth. Um, putting special voting rights into your charter um, where you limit the voting rights to um, stakeholders and not necessarily investors whose sole purpose is to maximize returns you know there's certain things that can be done but um, it is difficult to build that in over the long term but I think the number one biggest piece of advice I would give if you want your company to stay mission driven over the long term and not sell out like betray users um, and sell their data you know in order to make more money um, is really make sure you're careful about who you raise money from and and what the agreement is with your investors I think what the agreement is with your investors is even more important than who your investors are because there can be succession within your investors you know maybe one of your investors is absolutely on board with your mission but um, they die and leave their investment to their child who doesn't feel the same way. So you want to really make sure that um, the investment agreements that you create with your investors are really consistent with your long-term mission. I also did just hear a really good idea today from one of the entrepreneurs I talked to, which is to build in from the very beginning um, something things that will prevent outcomes that you don't want to see so for example in in this case um, this entrepreneur has set up their company in such a way where the users own their own data so it would be impossible for the company to sell their data down the road so that's another thing to think about so I guess my point is there's no perfect structure there's no perfect legal document to ensure that a company stays true to its mission over the long term and serves the interests of its 
stakeholders, but there are a lot of tools and tricks you can use to increase the chances that that happens. And I would say the number one thing is to be very careful about your legal relationship with your investors. Making sure that the way your investors get paid does not depend on you selling out. All right, bye.